Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today, I'm going to be listening to Chris Cornell for the first time. And this is because of you. You guys have been talking about Chris Cornell in the YouTube live chat and comments and in Patreon, and you've been telling me about him and referencing things like referring to him as if I should know what he sounds like. And I feel like I should know what he sounds like now. So uh, thank you for your influence very much. We're going to be listening to Temple of the Dog performing Hunger Strike, and we get a bonus. Eddie Vedder is also going to be performing on this. We know him from Pearl Jam, and I know him a little bit, but I've never done an analysis of his voice. This song has kind of a cool story behind it. Uh, apparently, Temple of the Dog was rehearsing in Seattle, and Eddie was there too. And Chris was singing part of it, and it was just kind of low, and it wasn't quite exactly what he wanted. Eddie was around, and he somehow sensed this. He was, I think, working on a drum in the same room at the time. And he ended up stepping into a mic and singing the part. He just instinctively knew exactly what Chris was going for and then sang it. And Chris was like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going for, but it's even better and more amazing. So Chris ended up inviting Eddie to be on the record with them. I thought, oh my gosh, that's such a cool origin story. I'm really excited to hear the song now. Let's get to it. <laughs> Cups already back to this. Okay, so this is my first, very first time hearing Chris Cornell. And the I'm struck by how much twang is in his sound. So uh, sometimes it comes from a very specific uh, school of voice, actually, Estill. Um, so we'll sometimes talk about twang and loft. Loft is like when the sound tends to have more dome in it, when you hear um, maybe like kind of like a whoosh whoosh or like air spinning in the back, uh, opera singers tend to have a lot more dome overall. And often country singers will have more twang, you know, it kind of goes together. So uh, Chris's voice has a lot of twang in it, a lot, a lot. And even though this is a, a music video, so, you know, this isn't, uh, this isn't, the lips aren't moving when this was recorded. This was, you know, uh, that they probably were singing to get the lips in the right timing at this point, but we don't know for sure if those are the mouth shapes that he made when recording these sounds. So uh, what I do see is his mouth is staying pretty closed overall, but he still has really good enunciation. So I think that uh, it's quite likely that you have a little bit of the soft palate down some to help um, more of the sound travel up through. He, it goes a little bit into the nose there, but then he probably just sings into the front of his face a bunch. So using all of these resonators here to create this extra twang, some laser in the sound. He has excellent sustaining of energy. Um, and this is so funny because I was just listening recently to Unchained Melody, Righteous Brothers, and was looking at the energy that they uh, that Bobby was able to sustain through his consonants. And I see a very, very similar thing that Chris Cornell is doing here. He's really seeing through those consonants and keeping a very, uh, a lot of the sound energy going through them the whole time. And it's almost like he chews or tastes some of the consonants and the words. He really goes through each of the mouth shapes, but he's not opening his mouth a ton, just some kind of relaxed position. And it sounds like he's really using the tongue a lot to help enunciate in there. So let's go back. Uh, where did he start singing? Here? From the mouths of decadence. Even in this nts at the 
end of decadence, he actually adds an extra lower vocalization through it, which helps continue that sound energy even further. Stealing bread from the mouths of decadence. That's cool. I like that style. But I can feed all the powerless when my cup's already over. back one more time. One of the other things I find really fascinating about his voice right now is that he, it doesn't sound like he's punching notes to go higher. I hear just like a really good line. Sometimes people think about higher pitches as like needing to stop and start the uh, wacka 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 that creates the phonation in your, in your larynx. So the, the vocal folds coming together there. But really when you go higher, your vocal folds just speed up. That's what creates a higher pitch. So they don't need to stop. Um, they just need to speed up, right? And it sounds here like he's not thinking about the pitches being like boop, 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 boop. And so you have this really smooth line of like, all oh, the pitches are right here. doesn't matter if they're high or low. They're kind of all within that same field of uh, audio vision, if you will. So uh, listen to this and listen to how smooth he keeps it between there. I think that these voices work really well together and it's partly because both of them have that really twangy placement and it it's like a it's not just here it's also like you hear teeth in it right um it's like if you could have teeth resonance this is what it would sound like uh teeth resonance for the win really cool uh and I like Eddie's voice has just um it sounds like it sits lower than Chris's like Eddie's more baritone and Chris is more tenory, which would make sense that they would have this complimentary sound together. Looking forward to hearing them together. <laughs> Sorry, it's so funny that they write O-O oh, oh, there. Like, he's not saying O-O, oh, oh. he's going mm, -mm like almost like an N. <laughs> work beautifully together it's there's just a similarity I must imagine in like their skeletal build and how they're focusing their resonance it's fascinating I I've had this experience where you sing with somebody and you just realize instantly that there's some sort of like synthetic resonance between just how your faces are put together and uh, it was so amazing that experience, the overtones and uh, just started vibrating together and, and like it felt like your head was going to explode 
singing next to this person. Very, very cool. Uh, I wonder what the physical sensation was of these two guys singing next to each other in the same room. That must have been glorious. <laughs> have like a teensy bit of like uh, a little bit of grit in there in both of their voices that's like a, a nice similarity in that way as well. Okay. Instrumental break. Lively guitar music. slight difference in them now. Uh, well, first similarity, they both have gorgeous long hair, perfect for headbanging, uh, but slight difference. When Eddie Vedder settles on the note, he sustains it, but it doesn't sound like he's driving through it as much. And Chris Cornell definitely has like a drive to those, those high notes. Like it's gonna like, like gotta keep going towards the end. It's, uh, it's so much commitment to keep going through a high note like that. It's really like you're going for it. And Eddie Vedder's sound relaxes and kind of um, envelops that, that lower note a little bit more in a different kind of way. Both are great. Listen to that again. If I heard that and didn't think like that, I if I hadn't heard any metal before hearing this, I would think, oh, that guy's gonna be wrecking his voice. But now that I've heard a lot more metal, I'm like, oh, is that good? Is that hurting? I don't know. I'm listening to it again. No, further. So two things that immediately make me think this is probably a healthy sound on top is there's some really nice vibrato that enters it. And vibrato, this kind of vibrato is a sign of periodic muscle relaxation. So yes, and vocal damage is usually when you have too much stress in the voice. So uh, good, nice little bit of vibrato in there. The other thing is that it sounds like it's coming from his gut. So it sounds like it's really well supported. And I like I like it when I hear a supported sound. Uh, that means that essentially the breath pressure isn't gonna come up underneath the larynx and just slam into those vocal folds as much. It's gonna be sustained lower in the body and then you're gonna have a little more breath control on the way out. Um, now, uh, this is a very high scream with lots of power and force. So question mark, I bet it's still exhausting. <laughs> Sorry, you can listen to that again. It sounds so good. Oh, that's the end. Ah!
This is supposed to be longer. Okay, back. We're we'll listening to that one more time. Listen to the way that Eddie is just so solid on this low note. He's an anchor on that pitch. He's just, he is there. It is not budging an inch. It's really great. I don't mind. That was too short. It was just too short. I wanted to hear way more of both of their voices. Uh, let's go back and listen to that song on repeat. Yeah? Okay, we're going to link to the song in the about section. So if you want to listen to it straight through, that link is there for you. And then come back and watch this analysis again and get deep into it with me. I love how their voices sound together. And I was really impressed with some of that high screaming in particular by Chris. Um, I I just want to hear a lot more of it. It's so funny. A lot of times I'm impressed by vocal technique and how that's being executed, but this time it's just the sound. I think it sounds really good. It sounds uh, like it's just got so much emotion and gut and commitment and it's like it's wrenching, right? So I like the sound of that a lot and I just love the way that these two voices blend together. I'd love to know if they did anything else together because the voices, they're just meant to sing together. It's really fascinating to hear them. Thank you so much to all of you for talking about Chris Cornell, for referencing him so I had to know what you're talking about. Now, please tell me some other songs that you would like me to listen to and review. Okay, leave those comments down below this YouTube video. We'll look for your responses there so I can do another Chris Cornell video or maybe another Eddie Vedder one, okay? open to both 100%. And you can come and say hello to me on YouTube every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. That's when we have our premiere releases. And we also have live chats during those premieres. There are zero ads. It's just really fun to get to watch the videos with you and talk to you, get to know you better. And you can find me on Patreon as well and at thecharismaticvoice.com. If you want to learn anything about music in general or about singing, those courses are at thecharismaticvoice.com. So you should check them out. I'll see you somewhere else soon.